Hello everyone. In this video, we'll learn how to uh, solve a critical path problem. So given a list of activities, uh, their immediate predecessors and their single estimate duration, uh, how can you calculate your early start, early finish, late start, late finish times? How can you identify which activities are critical and non-critical and calculate your project's completion time? Right. So what you see on the screen is a project which is about making parade floats. Um, it has eight different activities in it, starting from A through H. A small description for every activity is given to you. The immediate predecessors are listed. And lastly, the duration on every activity is also provided. Meaning, uh, initial paperwork would take uh, three days to do. Uh, to get it done, uh, body of the uh, float itself would take three days. Building the frame would add two more days and so on. So the duration on every activity is given to you. So what we'll do now is, based on this information, we'll create a project network. So you can see from the list here that A has no predecessor, meaning it can start on the very day one. So let's say this is not A, right? It can start right away, so it's not waiting for any other activity. B is dependent on the completion of A, and C is dependent on the completion of A as well. So we can show that using an arrow. So given my activities, I'm going to represent it in circular mode, whereas the predecessor relationship will be shown by the arrow. So B and C both are dependent on the completion of A. Now, D is dependent on the completion of B, so that's my D. E is dependent on the completion of C. is dependent on the completion of both B and C. D and E are followed by G. And lastly, H is dependent on the completion of B. Right? So what you can see here is a project network. Now, based on this project network, I have to calculate my project's completion time and um, figure out which activities are critical and which are non-critical. What I'll do here to begin with is create a table for every activity in my network. This will have three columns and then two rows. That's my first thing here. So let me show you that for all the activities in my network here. D3. E7, F3, G6, and H2. Now what I'll do is, in each of these cells, I'll calculate a different time. The early start, early finish, late start, and late finish times. Based on those times, we'll calculate our slack, and activities that have slack equal to zero will be my critical activity. The path that connects all critical activities is called a critical path. And the duration on the critical path is the project's completion time. Right, so uh, let's first calculate the top two numbers in the table, which are my early start and early finish times. So let's start with our activity A. 
it can start on day zero. So there is nothing that it's waiting on. It can start the day I decide to go ahead with the project. I can file my initial paperwork. So I can start on day zero. It says the sale shall not be done by day three, which is my earliest finish time. Now, since both B and C are dependent on the completion of A, the earliest B and C can begin the day day three. B takes two days, so earliest it can finish would be day six. C is an earliest finish day five. Similarly, D is dependent on the completion of B, so the earliest it can start would be six. Six plus three nine. E is dependent on the completion of C. So it can earlier start on day 5 and finish on the 12th. F is dependent on the completion of both B and C. So even though C is finishing on day 5, because B is not finishing until day 6, it cannot start until day 6. 6 plus 3, 9. Similarly, G is dependent on the completion of both D and E, and because E isn't done until day 12, G cannot start before day 12. 12 plus 6, 18. Lastly, H is dependent on the completion of C. C finishes on the 5th, so that's the earliest it can start, that which means it can earliest finish by day 7. Now, I have one initial activity in this project, which is my activity A. And then I have three end activities here, G, F, and H. I know these are my end activities because there is no other activity in the project that is followed by them. Right? So these are my absolute end activities in the project. At this stage, the max EFT within your end activities is your project's completion time. Right? So between 7, 9, and 18, since 18 is the highest, your project completion time is 18, meaning the earliest you can finish everything in your project will be 18 days. So our latest finish time for all the activities will be 18. For my end activities, everything must finish by day 18, right? Um, remember for early start, early finish, we go from the initial to the last activity in the project. And for your latest start, latest finish time, the bottom two numbers, we go in the reverse order in the network, which is called as a backward pass. Right? So you start from the end activities and then you work your way to the initial activity. So let's come back here. So the latest finish time on G is 18. If G must finish on the 18th, it takes six days to do it. It must latest start on day 12. 18 minus 6 is 12. Similarly, 18 minus 3 is 15. 18 minus 2 is 16. Right? G has to later start by the 12th because G is dependent on the completion of D and E. Both D and E must finish by day 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. 9 minus 7 is 5. D has to later start by the 9th, which means B has to later finish by the 9th. 9 minus 3 is 6. C. There are three different activities that follow C. F has to later start by the 15th. H has to later start by the 16th. However, C needs to later start by the 5th. So in order for my project to be on schedule, Start time would be 3. Now B has to later start by the 6th, C has to later start by the 12th, which means A has to later start by the 5th. 3 minus 3 is 5. Right? So at this point, we have calculated all the times early start, early finish, late start, and late finish for our activities. We know our project completion time is 18 days. Now, the next thing we need to do is identify our critical and non-critical activities. Activities that have slack equal to zero are my critical activities. In order to calculate slack, 
your flag is nothing but the difference between your LFT and EFT or you can say LS, LST minus EST. It's one and the same. It's basically the difference between your up and the bottom numbers. Right? So for example, flag of A is P minus 3 or 0 minus 0 is 0. Flag of B is 3. Flag of C is, a, uh, sorry, D is 3. Flag of C is 0. Flag of E is 0. Flag of G is 0. Flag of S is 9. Flag of H is 11. Fine. So, which are the activities that have a gas equal to 0? A, C, E, and G are my critical activities because all four of them have a slack equal to 0. B, E, F, and H are my non-critical activities. So, what is my critical part here? A, C, E, G is my critical part. The difference between a path and a network, uh, sorry, an arc in a network is a path is something that connects your one of the initial activities with one of your end activities. Whereas an arc is a, is a connection between any two nodes in a network. So for example, BD, uh, EG, BF, uh, CH, all these are arcs in the network, but there are only five different paths possible in this network. A, B, D, G, A, B, F, A, C, F, A, C, E, G, and A, C, H. If you calculate the duration on each of these five paths, you will see that A, C, E, G will be the longest with 18 days on end. And again, if you remember, critical path is the longest path. That is exactly what it is. Right? So, this is really a critical path uh, problem where we are trying to solve for the project's completion time. We are uh, trying to identify between our critical and non-critical activities. And we want to know that for every activity, what is the early start, early finish, late start, and late finish times. So that if I have to schedule, I know which activity to go with. Hope this helps. Thank you for watching.